So one of the things that we've done in order to drive these costs down is, is that we've disaggregated things. We've separated the hardware from the software. And, and in that separation, sometimes I like to say we let, we let the system integration smoke leak out. And this is where, where system integrators, WWT is a fine example of that, bring those elements back together. So when we look at what the comm service providers are going to be bringing to the edge, they're going to be bringing maybe their own hardware, or maybe it's a, a bring your own hardware, but they're going to bring the software applications. But in order for that to, to be stitched together into a solution, because this is what the enterprise really wants, they're not buying hardware and software, they're buying a solution, is that someone's got to be able to bring those pieces back together. And, that, and that's an activity of system integration. So we'll touch on that a little bit as to some of the opportunities that exist ahead of us in the edge. Hello and welcome to this third of a special three-part series of telecoms.com podcasts produced in partnership with Worldwide Technology. In this whole series, we've been focusing on edge computing, obviously with a telecoms perspective. In the first one, we introduced the edge, had a little look at um, how telcos can uh, best exploit it for commercial purposes. Uh, We talked about the importance of partnerships um, in the second one, we talked about uh, the, the evolution of uh, edge computing, where it used to just be something that was just the domain of IT companies and is now very much meeting in the middle of the two worlds. Um, and in this third part, we're going to talk about the opportunities of edge computing for enterprise. Again, you know, that's the whole point of this, is that it creates new business opportunities Uh, which hopefully the telecoms world can be part of. So in order to help us with that, as well as having um, Daniel Valle, who's the EMEA CTO of Worldwide Technologies, who's been with us for all three of these pods, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Larry Horner uh, from Intel. Again, every time I introduce people, I forget to look at their job title, so I have to go and look it up. He is Senior Solution Architect at Intel. Um, So uh, that sounds like a very lofty job title, and I look forward to hearing more about what you do in a sec. So to introduce you, we're going to talk about enterprise. And so basically that means company. That's American for companies. Um, And uh, another another Americanism we use when we talk about this is verticals. So we've got all these companies that are involved in specific areas of industry, and increasingly, thanks to edge computing, thanks to 5G, thanks to this convergence of the telecoms in the IT world, there are a bunch of new um, tools and capabilities and services that we can present to them. So I will invite you, uh, Larry, to just introduce that topic and tell us from the top line um, what some of these opportunities might be. Sure. Thanks, Scott. And and thanks for the welcome. Um, It's a a pleasure and honor to be here today. Um, So (laughs) expanding on the English language, which we've borrowed, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the use of, of enterprises. Um, sometimes we like to break that down into, into three really big buckets, if you will, and, and we'll try and talk about some of the examples into, inside of those buckets. Uh, pr- primary manufacturing, if you would. And when we think about the, the primary manufacturing, we're really talking about um, extraction of raw materials and turning them into some intermediate. So lumber, timber industry would be one, uh, oil and gas would be another um, that fall into that. So um, the, the other one, the secondary then really is that it's, it's the secondary. And, and this is the, the industries that turn out uh, finished goods. So whether that's a, an automotive industry or the computer industry or um, it, you know, the housing industry, you know, producing a finished good from that, from that environment. And, and then the third one, the tertiary element in that really is the, is the services industry. And there are, and the services industry is probably the one that, that has the greatest span in size. Um, you know, think of, uh, uh, the, the big box retailers, if you would. And, and, and those companies, um, their added value is in the logistics that they bring, but the logistics that they bring are tremendously complex. They're examples of, of some of those big box stores where when they're uh, receiving um, goods into their warehouses, um, that delivery um, system that, that has a very small window, you're, you're given a 15 or 20 minute window in order for your truck to arrive and for those goods to be, to be offloaded. And, and the reason for that is they've got such a high capacity in there that they've driven those costs out by, by, um, by, by um, optimizing that, 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 um, that flow, that logistical aspect of things. So when we look at those, the, those big areas, we're going to get into them a little bit more in the minutes ahead of us. Um, but we're going to pick on some examples in each of those. The one that we sort of leave out when we talk about enterprises 
in, in this scope then, and it's not that we're not interested in it, it, it falls in another category, is, um, is, the smaller, is the smaller retailer, if you would, what I call the barbershop or the baker. Hopefully that's, um, that, that's a little bit of a, of a tease or a precursor of, of how we're going to uh, you know, get into some of these examples. And, and obviously, one of the, one of the big cloud um, providers that we, that we work with says, look, nobody's data gets to our cloud without going through the comm service providers. And even in this edge type of an environment, nobody's data is going to be useful in that environment without that critical element of the cloud service provider. And we talked about cost just a little bit ago and how we try to you know, manage our cost, optimize our costs, um, you know, drive, drive down our, um, our expenses and drive up our revenues. So one of the things that we've done in order to drive these costs down is, is that we've disaggregated things. We've separated the hardware from the software. And, and in that separation, sometimes I like to say we let, we let the system integration smoke leak out. And this is where, where system integrators, WWT is a fine example of that, bring those elements back together. So when we look at what the comm service providers are going to be bringing to the edge, they're going to be bringing maybe their own hardware, or maybe it's a, a bring your own hardware, but they're going to bring the software applications. But in order for that to, to be stitched together into a solution, because this is what the enterprise really wants, they're not buying hardware and software, they're buying a solution, is that someone's got to be able to bring those pieces back together. And that and that's an activity of system integration. So we'll touch on that a little bit as to some of the opportunities that exist ahead of us in the edge. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And, and seeing as you've uh, naturally introduced the, the system integrator side of things, um, this is a good opportunity to bring Daniel into this particular conversation. So, Daniel, well, this time we're focusing on the on the enterprise opportunities. Uh, we've got a few things we're going to drill, drill down into, but building on on Larry's introduction, can you tell us a little bit more from an SI point of view? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, uh, again, they want to use the infrastructure, right? Uh, like they are using cloud or using the network. They are focused on their use cases because they want to sell their, you know. Um, their business, they they are, they are you know healthcare companies, they are industrial companies, they are you know uh, retail companies. That their job is to actually sell those outcomes to their customers. And uh, when you talk about all those things that are happening on the edge and are happening with the technology that you know Larry mentioned, which talks about disaggregation and 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 all those complexities. In the end of the day, what they're looking for is that infrastructure to be readily available for them, so they can actually develop and leverage. And that's a big ask because uh, again, it, it's most of the technology is taken for granted, uh, the, the effort that is taken to develop in it. Uh, if you think about the advantage of uh, the advance of uh, Facebook and social media, uh, you know, YouTube streaming, uh, all of these, these infrastructure leverage the very complex infrastructure that now YouTubers are just going and using for influencing people, or enterprises are actually just using for virtual shopping and uh, online e-commerce e platforms. Uh, that, that infrastructure needs to exist so that outcomes need to reach. Uh, that, with that in mind, again, the, the, the integration of not only creating this from a software development perspective, but also from, uh, uh, if we're thinking about large enterprises who need to actually to integrate things in their end, end premises, that requires a systems integrator because it's very complex and just does require intimacy to the, to the outcomes of their, their verticals, right? Um, and just to touch a bit on uh, further on that, um, we actually ran a lot, uh, um, uh, report, which we touched on the other two uh, podcasts, but briefly on this one, um, that really tried to address what are they doing with Edge and what are they, you know, what the outcomes they're trying to achieve. And uh, we had over 90 key use cases, and that was just six, among six industries in just four countries. So if you think about, you know, how... Uh, um, silo to a certain point, how, how selected we get, went to that report and how many different things are coming out of that as, as use cases and stories that the customers are actively working on. This, this looks like and sounds like a, a very big opportunity that tells me two things. One is different from the cloud journey that happened before that people didn't know, had no idea what cloud meant. And uh, for the ones that actually kept thinking like that, probably most of them are not in business anymore. But different from that, they are now actively looking into it and they are actually studying and seeing how they can take business advantage of this new technology. So that's, I think it's a big difference that the study revealed. Um, and the other one as well is uh, the, the, the vast majority of uh, the, the, the platform business, the revenues will sit with them. So on the 17 billion that we forecast on, the, uh, on that report, 59% of this will be with the uh, you know, application developers, application platforms the outcomes that are achieving from that, and also the platform enablers. 
we just saw, of course, still leaves a good chunk of 41% of that 70 billion, which is uh, not a negligible number uh, with infrastructure providers. So again, big uh, work streams, people are thinking, talking and investing on, on how to take benefit, financial benefit about, uh, uh, you know, with regards to the edge compute. Yes, so that's a it's a very big uh, very big pie the 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 telco world can get a big piece of, um, and I think it's important to look at it that way. It's not a it's not a winner takes all thing. It's such a massive ecosystem that it's just about working out which bit of you fit into, and then there'll be plenty of revenues and profit to come from that if you do it well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna direct it back to Larry and, and set you a bit of a challenge, Larry, because as we've all concluded, this is huge. Um, but I'm just, as you promised to do, you're going to sort of drill down into a couple of use cases. Um, let's see if you can, uh, you know, time permitting, uh, give us a, maybe an industrial focused one and a consumer focused one of where enterprise, where there are opportunities for enterprise that are facilitated by the edge. Sure. So, um, in the, um, in the industrial manufacturing, there are a lot of really great examples we can talk about. And sometimes we, we throw out, um, you know, buzzword of industry 4.0 and in that conversation. Um, here at Intel, sometimes we will say that the ultimate sensor in these in these type of applications is the is the camera. And uh, one of the great examples is a uh, is a manufacturing process. This is uh, inside heavy industry um, where they're doing um, metal castings. So you know, hot metal comes out, steel of some sort, and into a cast and you have to perform quality control on that, um, you know, to make sure that uh, you know the cast flowed correctly and that there there weren't any impurities that got into place. And in the historic way, even two three years ago, was you had to let that part cool a certain amount, and time is going by, and you're making more castings, so things are further down the assembly line. And then you could actually use a mechanical device to you know to pick this up and and and, and rotate the device, and a human would would inspect this device and you know thumbs up thumbs down, you know, it's a red light green light kind of thing. The operation continues well. If you if you front end that though with uh, with some optical capabilities, um, some cameras, very high resolution uh, cameras, you can you can make that determination much sooner in the manufacturing process. You don't need to wait until the part cools down to you know to manage it. Uh, the the challenge though is of course that um, that you want to get that data, make a decision on it, and operate more quickly so that you can improve your quality of the device. Um, and then as that part may even flow further down the assembly line, let's say you've got some requirement to ensure that uh, you know serial number is cor- correctly recorded and the quality of that part itself is recorded. That's an example then of the data that you can actually move from the shop floor itself. First example. The data wants to stay on the shop floor. And the second one, um, further down the line, same camera, uh, same device that you're looking at, but now you just need a snapshot of that device to ensure the integrity of it for, for, um, for accountability um, to, you know, to your customers. But that data may, in fact, um, you know, be placed in a database deep inside uh, the corporate headquarters somewhere that's, uh, that's offsite, you know, thousands of kilometers or more away. Um, real world examples there. And... And when we take a look at, at, at why that's important, if you think about a very large factory and, and these really high resolution cameras, the amount of data that comes from a 4G camera, if you get a couple hundred of those um, in a factory, and that's not a, a large number in a, in a large manufacturing, uh, can completely collapse uh, your, your typical interface that you would find uh, from, from an industrial environment um, out, to, um, you know, out into the internet. But if you introduce 5G into that with the capability of running uh, an interface that's in the, the two gig range, you can certainly accommodate a large factory and the amount of data that's you know, that's um, that's going to be uh, necessary to transform, uh, be transferred from that factory and and then out into the cloud for for operational storage. But you still got the edge application itself for the factory management um, that goes on where you can keep your private data private, and that's a uh, that's the example then that you may want to take and move it into more of a consumer type of environment. The other one that we want to talk about is uh, either financial services or in the health industries. In this new world, now the um, uh, some of the comm service providers are showing us that uh, there's been a, a, a big uptake in, um, in health uh, medicine being conducted uh, virtually as, uh, as we've, uh, um, you know, reduced our, our personal contact for a variety of, of good reasons. But in, in those areas, we've got the regulatory requirements that say well, what you can do with that data and once it's, uh, if it needs to be stored, where it can be stored from a jurisdictional standpoint. And that's another application where um, if you're in a health environment setting, that personal data may, may be required to be jurisdictionally constrained and yet billing information, let's say, um, can be can be aggregated back at a corporate center. So those are those are applications again when we start looking at uh, 
at, uh, at, the, um, at the scope of what we can do with an edge type of environment. And again, believe it or not, that camera comes into play, that, that ultimate sensor is part of that. And as you start looking at, at very large institutions and all the data that they may be collecting in that, uh, in that environment, again, you, you've got to look at that uh, discrimination as to which data stays local, the high volume, high capacity data that also may have jurisdictional requirements stays local, and then um, more disaggregated or lower lower volume data can can uh, go deeper into the network. That's great. Thank you very much. And you reminded me that the the video side of things. You know, whenever we look at reports of of just uh, internet traffic and mobile network traffic, it's increasingly like three quarters of it is video, and that's just going to keep going up. And as you say, that's just with people going around filming things on their phones. If, if, if all factories have got hundreds of cameras in or keeping an eye on everything, then that's an order of magnitude even greater in terms of bandwidth. So, I mean, that's not necessarily something we're focusing on this, but it's, it's an interesting reminder of quite how important telecoms networks are um, to enabling all this stuff, even from that point of view. And actually talking about telecoms networks, Daniel, I, w I want to ask you just one more thing that, that springs to mind about using the edge in a telecoms environment is, is some of the um, innovations that are going around, going on around the radio access network. So that, you know, the, the softwareization, the virtualization, the, the ITization is, is moving all the way to the very edge. And I'm just wondering if WWT has, has any sort of involvement and any insight into uh, things like um, open RAN and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, before I respond to that specific question, maybe just as a segue, uh, which, which I think is very important, and you've mentioned the amount of bandwidth, the amount of cameras, the amount of input that's required. It's not just a network, it's what you do with the information once you get the information, and then feed it back to the ecosystem to actually actuate on it. So that, that cycle of retrieving the data, the feed of feeds, the sensor IoT information, and, and working it through uh, and, uh, the platform, the application to, to, to to make sense out of the network, to make sense out of the outcomes you're trying to achieve. That's where, again, the edge compute is a very core component because it's just not for saving bandwidth and just make sure that the right data is sent, but make sure that it's actuated in the right time. And then the natural question becomes, you know, if, if you're working in a very large organization that can afford that amount of edge resources, great. But there could be another opportunity. There could be an opportunity as a maybe backup data Maybe a backup process uh, can be stored on a remote edge or on a central office edge from a telco service provider. So you may have, uh, you know, your core business working with your applications on the on-premise edge. But if things go wrong, you have a backup alternative, which is not going to be as costly as twice that infrastructure in the location. So leveraging, there are a number of companies already leveraging that kind of mentality to potentially use that central office, maybe not as a first use case for now, maybe that's coming in the next couple of years, but definitely using it as a backup infrastructure, right? So if you think about private f and private LTE operated by a, a network operator, creating the hierarchical edge is, is also something of key interest. And thinking about that and talking about that kind of uh, hierarchical edge and, and what edge and central office could look like, Service providers are already investing on that front because, um, you know, on the cloudification journey of the uh, of everything they are doing, uh, one of the things that are forefront of their uh, kind of cost optimization journey, um, and they are not there yet by any strategy of imagination, but the investments are happening, is on the open run, which is fundamentally taking, you know, the radio access network and, and virtualizing it so you can make better cost economies of scale by leveraging a cloud net, cloud ready network and also diversifying supply chain. Again, historically you have in the US maybe two and uh, here in Europe and Asia Pacific, we have three suppliers that dominates the market. You know, it comprises for over 70% of lots of the network uh, uh, operating cap CapEx expenditures, um, you know, from, from average any, any, any large uh, network company. And that's a big cost. That'd be cost that can A, be optimized and B, if that infrastructure is happening and that work streams are happening, can it be leveraged to all the net, net revenue streams, right? Because again, what's important to re remember um, is that you know, service providers, we're going to be more profitable by decreasing cost. And Opera Run is a cost decrease and a strategic initiative for them uh, and also creating that new revenue streams. We touched a lot on this net re revenue streams discussion in the other podcasts. So kind of focusing on that operational efficiency discussions, uh, they recognize and WWT recognize that's a 
a very important element to the sense that, you know, it is very recently announced uh, Open Run Policy Coalition. Uh, it was signed by a number of operators and companies. WWT is one of the only service prov- um, the systems integrators that are available there on the website. And uh, again, the idea of that policy coalition is to really foster uh, open run practice, not only in the government in, uh, bodies, but uh, uh, in, in multiple countries and in multiple industries to le- literally leverage and enhance the supply chain of network operators. And again, that we see as, a, you know, it's not an isolated thing from everything else happening on the edge. The minute you have more robust, flexible, and, and cloudified central offices, the better you can enable that environment to cope with enterprise use cases and classic demands. So WWP is very keen on this. Our advanced technology center and our integration centers are now geared towards, have been in the works for over two years on that front. Uh, and uh, we're now working with a number of different companies. I mean, the likes of, uh, uh, you know, Ultrastar, Airspan, uh, and, and a number of others as well as, as part of our key core uh, capabilities as, as a, as a as a partnership and, and landscape. And again, we're putting these technologies in front of our service providers as we speak. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Daniel. And then uh, we're running out of time, but we've got time for one last question, which I'll direct it at you, Larry. What about the human side of things, the cultural side of things? So we're asking companies to make a lot of change. Can you just give us a brief, brief commentary on how you think they can best go about that? Sure. Um, yeah, change, change can be hard. There's a American humorist, Mark Twain, that had a quote about that. It's um, sometimes quoted um, in, in a humorous light. But, uh, you know, when we talked about Industry 4.0 and some of the challenges, there's not a lot of greenfield out there. So so introducing this new technology it isn't for the purpose of the technology. It's for the solution. That enterprise wants that solution. You know, I talk about uh, Forrester bits giving me a flat bottom hole. When I need a flat bottom hole, I need the hole. I don't need the Forrester bit. It just happens to be that's the mechanism that I use in order to get it. And the same thing happens in this technology, this transformation, is that what we're looking for in the enterprise is a solution to our problems. Is I want to, I want to improve my productivity. I want to reduce my costs. And and the technology of 4G and those uh, uh, those capabilities that it brings and the connectivity are the mechanisms through which we achieve that. But that change is sometimes hard because if I have something that's working and introducing new technology, I have to be able to. Make manage that risk. And, and using a comm service provider on the radio side, for example, and WWT as a system integrator, give me the ability to reduce that risk and manage it and then motivate those decision makers at the enterprise to, to, to move forward with that technology. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. And, and guys, once more, we've run out of time. I know we, it sometimes feels like we've scratched the surface of, of, of very deep topics, but I think we've, I think we've still managed to cover a lot. So Thanks again uh, to both of you for uh, informing us so much. And, and yeah, so we're, we're going to have to wrap it up there. Sorry, sorry, Larry, not going to give you another shout. Um, That's all right, Scott, um, next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next time, definitely. So it just leaves me to say uh, thank you very much to both of you and also to our other two special guests in the earlier podcasts. Uh, to the audience, if you're, for whatever reason, tuning into this one first, there are two previous ones that I'm sure you'll enjoy just as much. But uh, thank you for joining us.